Danielle Smith is demanding the government hold a full public inquiry to demand to determine how widespread the abuse of taxpayers' money goes in the PC government. Gary Bobrovitz reports. What should we pay for their affair? A Redford parody has gone viral, created by a University of Calgary student. But the Wild Rose is not laughing. Critics believe the travel scandal goes deeper than former Premier Alison Redford and a possible RCMP criminal investigation into the AG report isn't good enough. That is something that requires a full public inquiry into all of the matters that uh, the Auditor General looked at for the Premier's office. But one Tory leadership candidate says it's not necessary. We will need a public inquiry. I'm just going to open up the vault and throw it all out and let, uh, let uh, independent party uh, review it all. The Wild Rose claims a plane trip by Redford and a handful of cabinet ministers to Grand Prairie two years ago is a good example. The government said it was for official business, but the Auditor General says it was a partisan trip for the PC party. Electricity Minister Donna Kennedy Glanz was on that trip in October 2012. The Calgary Varsity MLA left the Tory caucus in a dispute with Alison Redford earlier this year. On Wednesday, she asked the caucus to forgive her and take her back. Today, she's asking for forgiveness again, this time from Alberta voters for being on that plane flight. Glanz, who was on vacation, issued this written statement. I wish to apologize personally for inappropriate travel on a government airplane from Grand Prairie to Calgary on the evening of October 25, 2012. Together with other PC MLAs, I was in Grand Prairie on that date to attend the PC party's Northern Alberta Leaders' Dinner. They won't live within their means. It remains to be seen if Alberta voters will forgive and forget. Gary Bobrovitz, Global News. Well, the dust over the scathing report on the Premier's abuse of government planes has not yet settled. Once again, there are calls to ground the fleet to force the Premier and ministers to fly commercial. Kendra Sugoski reports. The private planes are at government's beck and call, and the flights are costing taxpayers millions of dollars. We're not getting the value out of it. They're being abused. And we have a finance minister who doesn't think it's his job to oversee and make sure the policy is being followed. They should be sold. This isn't the first time government has been told to fly commercial. A decade ago, Ralph Klein was accused of using the planes as his personal air limousine service. The Public Accounts Committee questioned one of his trips. Is she calling me a liar? She doesn't believe me? It's basic you don't believe accountability, me? sir. You make you a don't believe me? and you back and you provide You don't believe me? The argument back then, Alberta is a big place and ministers need to cover all corners of the province. The fingers have been dipping into the candy jar for over 30 years and it's time to uh, remove the candy jar. But critics say Alberta is the only province still using government aircraft for business and as the Auditor General points out, for pleasure. You can fly to Red Deer for gosh sakes. Uh, you don't need an Air Force now. and. Uh, it's, it's part of the Alberta exclusivity. The Auditor General says the last cost analysis was done back in 2012 and it points to an additional cost of nearly $4 million. He says it's time for the PC government to consider if that cost is worthwhile to the taxpayer. Yeah. It's a question we put yeah, to those you know what, buying to be the next right. premier. Uh, I, I think I can manage the office of the premier without a plane. Throughout his campaign, Jim Prentice has said he would fly commercial and only use the government fleet if there was no other option. But Rick McIver says this report raises serious questions about the value for money of government planes and suggests that value has gone down. He says, I am prepared to eliminate these planes and use commercial alternatives. But until the fleet is grounded, critics say the temptation remains in the air. Kendra Slagoski, Global News. The government established its air transportation services in the 1970s to support forest fire operations. Today, the four aircraft are mainly used to transport government staff and ministers. You're watching the news.